one of the things that's wonderful about having a comic company is it allows me to come in contact with so much talent yeah. uh, and bring together people from movie writing and, and comic writing and all the kind of novelists and kinds of people we can shake it up and we'll try and make Storm King Comics a different voice. I don't need to do superheroes. They're already being done fabulously by other people. I don't need to do manga. They're being done fabulously elsewhere. But to be able to bring a slightly different perspective and do what uh, John Carpenter is known for right. and I'm known for is fun. And to get these other voices involved with us is just fabulous. How do you remember, Colin, you guys coming together? Uh, so I was familiar with Storm King for a while, just as a fan, just yeah, as a reader. Right. And then, it, if I remember correctly, I think it was New York Comic Con. It was packed, uh, as always. And I was walking from one place to the other, and I kind of stagger stopped. Because I looked over and said, oh, there's Storm King. And oh, there's Sandy sitting there. So I went over to introduce myself, and that's really how it started. It was just a simple... Hey, I'm Colin. We had maybe a couple of minutes to talk because it was, I mean, it was insane. And we just talked for a couple of minutes and then we kind of started talking at other conventions and, uh, and exchanging emails. And then when we had some, I had some ideas that I wanted to, to run by Sandy and Long Haul was one of those ideas we wanted to talk about. And it came, it just, it came, you know, it came from that, that initial meeting at, uh, I was like, well, I was oh, you. <laughs> you. Oh, that is, that you said, well, I introduced myself and you said, oh, I know you. And I said, wait, you do? <laughs> because I went back to my table and I texted my good friend who's a super horror fan. I said, guess who said they knew who I was? <laughs> well, and I don't think I mentioned it, but Sandy's, it, Sandy is the wife of John Carpenter, the amazing... Um, director, creator of many of our horror dreams of, of the 80s and 90s uh, of our childhood. So, uh, and, and you were involved in a good portion of those. Yeah, I produced yeah, the, the television shows and movies. Well, and, and I know a lot of the comics that you guys have, you've got some of them that are based with John. Um, the, you're taking some of, I don't know, is it his stories? What, what are, are you adapting different parts because I do see John Carpenter's name listed on several of your comics there. Yeah, they sell better. I uh, can imagine <laughs> I get that, okay? That's fair. <laughs> yeah, the first comic we did, Asylum, yes. was uh, a story created by John, Thomas Ian Griffin, and myself. So that was, you know, a collaboration that then we went on and because it was our first comic we had an experienced comic writer, right. too, and that's how I first learned how to write comics, because he totally didn't write the IP, and I thought, I'm in so much trouble here, and I was editing him, and I would fall for it every time, and then I found out, he was, I, I said, this is like a police procedural with threesomes, and everybody laughed at me and go, well, that's what Bruce is known for. <laughs> and I went, ah -ha. But, how do I learn how to do what he does? How do I fall for that story? How do I get hooked into it? And I learned comic writing as opposed to screenwriting by editing Bruce Jones. And I, he taught me comic writing by editing him. And we had so much great input from Steve Nines, Bruce Jones, uh, Tim Bradstreet, uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, all kinds of people who were very generous and very kind, as opposed to people that thought, the movie people are here to rape and kill me. Uh, so, that's, that's how those things that, That's wonderful. Wow. Yeah, you, you have... You've dipped your toe in a lot of waters over the years, so yeah, comics is just. Door a, opens, I walk through. I, that is very wise. I love that, Sandy. 
Well, well Colin, I, I want to ask you uh, about the story that you are that you have done with Storm King Comics about uh, long haul, and um, I read over that story. Really interesting story. Really interesting story about uh, truckers and, and a twist in there. You, you had a really cool prologue where you talked about your father being a salesman and a couple uncles being truckers. Tell us a little bit about that for the viewers that have not read the comic yet. Yeah, I don't think you grow up when I grew up and not have this sort of healthy respect and uh, and the mystique of the trucking community. Yeah, because I, they were, I grew up the same way. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. They, you know, we had we had TV shows like BJ and the Bear, and we had uh, yep. you know we, BJ and the Bear. You did BJ and the Bear. <laughs> Well, and the bear. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. BJ and the oh bear. God. You had convoy, duel. You just had. There were so many. You know, movies like that. Right. There were songs about trucking that I yeah. was surrounded by. My dad was a big CB radio guy, and like I said, he traveled everywhere, so he was always on the CB with the truckers. It just was something. It was sort of like this mystic thing. Now, as I grow up, my thoughts turn darker. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's, say it's, it's not little, so. Yeah, Having I, I read get, a lot of your comics, I get a little, huh. I get a little more, uh, a little more somber. <laughs> and um, and I and of course I want to do a, a horror story about truckers and about revenge and about uh, bad guys going up against bad guys. Right. And I like that kind. Those are just kind of stories I like. It's a, uh, to me it's a scary story. It's but it's very real world. This isn't. These aren't monsters. Right. These aren't aliens, which I love all that. But this is this is people doing terrible things to people, which we all can agree is maybe a little too believable. Right, right. right. In today's day and world, and it, it's been historical. You know, that's that's really the big monsters are the people. Right. So it just it was a my my writing partner on the book Keith Modio kind of came to me with this idea about how many people disappear on the roads every year, how many serial killers they uh, think are in action at any given time, and it just lends itself to a, a, a really cool story. We kind of built a, a world and a history around that. We created this sort of organization of uh, truck driving serial killers, yep. and, uh, and we just went from there and just kind of tried to make it crazier and grittier <laughs> and, uh, and more awful. As, uh, as it goes along. Well, it is that. I, I will give you that. But it's sensational in how it is. You you both are to be commended for the comic. Um, check out Long Haul, which is a... It, it's an, it's what... How many issues is that now? It's well, the three? It's, well, Long Haul was an original graphic novel. Okay, so original whole, graphic novel. That's right. And it's... I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a thick story. So you, yes. But you get the whole thing in one chunk. See, there you go. All right, Sandy, I want to ask you about, uh, you know, you are 10 years in with comics, actually 11 now. Um, tell us a little bit about Storm King Comics, just kind of what your goals are there. And tell us a little bit about uh, Storm King Productions while we've got you. <laughs> Once they're done talking above us. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Sandy's looking up to God as he's talking above. God is telling you to go down the aisle. Um, <laughs> well, you know, Storm King Productions is my overall production company that makes the movies, does the podcast, uh, does the television shows, and then a division of it is the comics. And um, basically, it's, it's anything that sounds interesting and seems within our wheelhouse. Sounds cool and it fits the branding. Um, I have a, a philosophy of why not. You get to have fun. Uh, you're not responsible to anyone else, particularly with the comics. Right. You get to do, we're not limited by budget beyond what I know we can lose financially. Uh, there's no studio that's upset. If somebody doesn't like our comments, we won't jump by another one. Um, and I can give artists freedom and allow them to retain their IP and uh, pay artists uh, what their quotes are. So people like me because my, my 
my checks come out on time. <laughs> and they get to do what they want, is largely. <laughs> and so, so I find when people are happy, I'm happy. Yeah. And so uh, I don't have an end goal in sight. We just want to keep doing things while people are happy. And when they're not, it's probably when I'm dead. So I said, it'll be all be fine. Well, tell us about um, your uh, Storm Kids brand. What, what exactly is that? Uh, I'm assuming it's more of a horror for kids sort of comic, it's or stair step, stair step horror. Uh, horror is an uh, uh, allegorical meaning, mm -hmm. and it allows us to process our fears, face our fears, those things. And what's gotten lost a little bit uh, is that children need to process their fears on their levels. They shouldn't really be playing in the same sandbox as the kind of horror that, that I have made for adults. Right. People will go, oh, but he watches Walking Dead. That's what A shoots. But also, that's kind of a soap for crimes. Right. Um, but they have no fears. So for the, the storm kids, for the little kids, that's four to eight year olds, I don't torment children. They, they get to have ghost buddies and things so that they can feel they're part of the closet. And so that they don't feel left out when they're standing here at a convention and everybody else gets a home. When you hit the 8 to 12 year olds, they need a way to process the things that they're now experiencing. Uh, death, uh, separation anxiety, those things. And you can handle that gently and give them empowerment. Get, let them be heroes, uh, but you don't deny that bad things happen. It's how you handle it. And then when you get the young adults who think they're ready for the big stuff, but frankly their fears aren't the same as ours. Right. So then you can introduce a little bit of blood, a little bit of you know what what is evil really? Is it is it really the bad guys? Is it really the monster? Because if you think back to Universal War, the monster was the victim, not the bad guy. Yes. So you can experiment with that all and discerning, you know, where is the evil? Is it, is it out there? And are you discerning where the bad guy is? So that's how we handle this one. That's awesome. It reminds me of a little bit of the Goosebumps um, Those, sort of... Goosebumps is great. Yeah. But when I started in comics and I was really looking around, I didn't find a lot of great horror no, kids. I agree. I agree. Well, Colin should be writing all those, right? You should be writing all the horror for kids. Did or you would have to narrow yourself back did there. you hear how tired I was? <laughs> <laughs> I will take anything Colin chooses to draw it. Well, now that sounds like a game plan for the future. Some potential, uh, some potential books together. That sounds amazing. Because uh, Lord knows, Colin only writes like eighteen thousand books a month. So I'm sure he can find a room for another one. Hey, I have to stand in line. I get it. <laughs> but I'm always here for whatever falls through the cracks. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to ask a little bit just about your publishing. Um, do you publish directly? into comic book stores, you know, like uh, using a distributor, or are you more Kickstarter based? H how do people get a hold of your comics? Uh, they put them on their phone list at the store, okay. and Diamond. So it's so through Diamond. Okay, but great. we're also not exclusive to Diamond, so sure. uh, it's now going to be a wider reach internationally. So so they can go to the preview catalog at their comic book store, find your guys' stuff, get it on that pull list for them. Yes. That's perfect. That's awesome. And I, they can also reach us at, at uh, stormkingcomics.com and find whatever isn't showing up because the distribution didn't make it to their comic shop. And we know that's a problem with distribution for everybody. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, this is not a new situation. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. All right. Um, let me see if there was any other questions I had here for you both, and then I will let you go because I know you're both very busy people. Um, 
that was my big last question if you guys were going to work together in the future but uh sandy's actually answered that she's game colin so yeah but i gotta so, chase it yeah like a done deal is what so, it sounds but, like to me but, it's, uh, Colin likes to be chased, you know. He uh, just asked his wife. She runs around with the, you know, the, the pan to hit him, and you know, uh, you know, she's she's a wonderful woman, by the way. Yeah. All right. You better you better say that. Oh, she is. She she puts up with you, and she's actually tons of fun. So, all right. For geekycool.com, Mr. Colin Bunn, Miss Sandy King. Thank you both for your time and. I look forward to reading more of the comics, so uh, you've, you've got a fan now. Perfect. <laughs> All right.